Looking at basement waterproofing, it's really important right from the beginning to get the right people involved. One of these people is a geotechnical specialist who will help you looking at the hydrology and the hydrogeology of the area. And this is going to let you know what drainage options there are in terms of land drain, water tables, have you got risk posed by a water table, and that will affect how you then approach the waterproofing design. When looking at basement design, one of the things we need to establish is what it's going to be used for. This could be something like a cinema or a car park. In BS8102, the document which covers basement design, we have three grades. Which we have a grade one environment. This is normally a wet or where some seepage is allowed, appropriate to the intended use. So a car park would be an example of that. The second grade, grade two, which is slightly drier, now doesn't allow for any water to come in. However, some dampness is permissible. So maybe something like a plant room or a lift shaft might be grade two. Grade three is reserved for habitable, ventilated spaces, which are often used for things like dining rooms, kitchens, cinemas, and so on. Future ventilation of the basements needs to be looked at. For example, if you're doing something like a garage, which may eventually become a bedroom, has provision been put in to accommodate that? It's not always necessary, but it should be discussed at the design stage. There are several documents which cover waterproofing practice in the UK. The main one which most people will use is BS8 102 and the 2009 revision. This is the code of practice for the protection of below ground structures against water from the ground and is effectively the benchmark at which we design waterproofing systems against. Another couple of documents available were produced by the Construction Industry Research and Information Association, also known as Syria. 139 and 140 titled Water Resisting Basements both have a lot more detail in and are complementary to BSA 102 so these might be of use when you're doing your waterproofing designs. The PCA have a number of documents available, one of them being the Code of Practice for the Remedial Waterproofing of Structures Below Ground. These documents have been written by PCA members involving consultants, contractors, manufacturers, all collectively aiming to introduce best practice into the industry. Type A systems, also known as barrier protection, are often a material that is introduced to the structure where there's no other resistance to water migration. So this might be applied to the outside, to the inside, or sometimes in a sandwich construction where it's actually within the building fabric itself. Another form of waterproofing is known as type B protection, and this is known as integral. This is where the structure itself offers a waterproofing, and generally speaking, we're looking at things like reinforced concrete or concrete with waterproof additive in it. Type C forms of waterproofing, known as drained cavities, can take two forms. One being a proprietary membrane, dimpled so that it allows water to pass through it to a point of collection, or some people now actually form a drained cavity in the structure itself, so the water will drain within the cavity and again be removed by pumping or sometimes by gravity discharge. An underlying principle of waterproofing from BSA 102 is that we should expect and put contingency in should there be a defect in the system. If water comes in, we need to think about can we fix it, can we get to the waterproofing to repair it. If you can't or if it's not feasible, the design should be re-evaluated and maybe another approach taken. The best materials in the world are only going to be as good as the people that install them. You can spend a lot of money having the correct waterproofing design, the correct materials, but when they get to site, if they're installed or detailed badly, you may encounter problems. It makes sense, therefore, to use people who are used to these systems, who will install them correctly under supervision, and they are trained, and they ultimately will be able to offer you a guarantee for that. Very often on building sites, you have several trades carrying out different works. All of these trades, if they're going to be near the waterproofing, need to have awareness of the system that's been installed and what should or shouldn't be done nearby or to it. Things we come across where you've maybe got a waterproof coating, people maybe put a fixing through it to fix a shelf or something like that. Obviously, something like that is going to damage the waterproofing and could result in a leak.
A problem we do see, especially with drained cavity systems, is where people are building internal walls and the mortar that's used to stick the bricks and blocks together falls into the drain cavity. This can also block the flow of water and result in leakage and failure as a result. Throughout the build process, the waterproofing should be continuous and eventually it needs to tie in with the damp proofing measures above ground. This needs to be a staged approach to make sure that each trade knows that if something needs to be included at that point, it is introduced. It's not good going to a site and finding a wall where you need to get a membrane through it. If opting for a Type C cavity drain system, it's important that prior to finishes going in place, a flood test is carried out. This is to prove a few things, but primarily making sure the water flows through the system, finds its way to the sump pump, and if a pump is present, that discharges it. Looking at the pump specifically, there should be a commissioning process. This is to register things like the serial number and date of installation, and that's then documented and put in with the waterproofing paperwork. BSA 102 is very clear that from the beginning or at the earliest stage possible, a waterproofing specialist should be included as part of the design team. This is to ensure a fully integrated and well thought design is incorporated into the structure right from the beginning. The PCA has a register of waterproofing design specialists. These are people that can assist people like architects and other construction professionals in providing the information they need to progress and put together a waterproofing design. They have specialist knowledge in these areas as well as qualifications and they will be experienced in working with design teams in moving the scheme forward. The PCA offer a number of qualifications, one of these being the Industry Recognised Certificated Surveyor in Structural Waterproofing, also known as CSSW. Attainment of this qualification is one of the requirements in order to be considered for the PCA's Register of Waterproofing Design Specialists.